تذكر يوما كنت تعانق دمعة الفكر تناجي الله في صبر وترجو رحمة تسري أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم Just a few words in the first ayah. Alha kumu takathur. Alha in Arabic is a past tense verb. Ilha comes from lahun. Lahu is the trilateral form. The, the thulathi mazid form is ilha. That's the mustar. So alha yulhi ilha. But the original word is lahu. Lam, ha, and wow. Which actually literally means entertainment. It literally means entertainment. In another place, Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Ilamu annamal hayatu dunya laibun wa lahun." Know that worldly life is nothing more than play and entertainment. So this is one word, one way that word lahu is understood. Another way the word lahu is understood is that which keeps you busy and takes you away from something you're actually supposed to be doing. And that's exactly what entertainment is. Entertainment essentially is a waste of time. And you could be using that time for something more productive, but you basically lost that time entertaining yourself. That's the essence of the word lahu. But from it, when you come to the word ilha, it means to be distracted, to be pulled away from something. And in the verb itself is already embedded the idea that the thing that distracted you was less important, and the thing you were distracted away from was more important. That was more, that's already embedded in the word itself. Now, similarly, it's used in many places in the Quran. For instance, in Surah Al-Munafiqoon, Allah warns us, "Ya ayuha ladina amanu la tulhikum." Same verb. This is over there. It's in fi'l nahi. This is in the present tense form. La tulhikum amwalukum wa la auladukum an dikrillah. Don't allow your money and your children to be to to dis, to delude you, to distract you from the remembrance of Allah. So Allah is teach, establishing a point there. When it comes to remembering Allah, then even your money and your children are less important. And they are actually distractions from remembering Allah. Actually our money and our children should be a means by which we should remember Allah. And that lesson we will learn in this surah. How do you take what you have and that becomes a means not to forget Allah, but a means to remember Allah. That's the lesson essentially in this surah. Really scary incident in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. He's starving. You know, a couple of days of no real food. Abu Bakr Siddiq comes over. He looks at his face. He knows he's starving too. Umar bin Khattab comes over. He can tell from his face he hasn't had much to eat either. All, and he, he doesn't worry about himself. Who's he worried about? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sahaba. So he takes them to another Sahabi who's a little bit more wealthy. And they quickly, and he wasn't home actually. And he said, Salaamu Alaikum a couple of times outside the door. And nobody responded. So once you say salamu alaykum twice, what are you supposed to do? He's leaving. When he's leaving, the, the, the wife of the sahabi, the sahabiya comes out and says, we heard you the first time. We just, want you to do, we just wanted the salam on the messenger, of the messenger to come to our house more than once. <laughs> That's why we didn't answer the first time. So she, so she gives them some food and just a little bit of water, very little bit to eat. And he tells Abu Bakr siddiq radiallahu anhu, he tells Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he tells them, this is the na'im we'll be asked about. This is the blessing. And compare that. And he's, what, they're getting water after a couple of days of dehydration. And what are we in, drinking? And what are we eating? And how are we clothing ourselves? And where are we going to sleep? Imagine. Subhanallah. Our, we're being re, uh, it's being rewired. Our thinking is being rewired. You know, when nowadays we've come to a point of confusion in the Muslim ummah. The more dunya you have, you say, Alhamdulillah, I have a really nice house. Which is nice. You should say that. But you should also say, Astaghfirullah, I'll be asked about a really nice house. I'll be asked. The more I have, the more I'll be asked. The less I have, the less I'll be asked. So the one who has more, is nothing wrong with having more, but you better be ready for what? You better be ready to answer.
You better be ready because you had, you had more na'im. But you know what modern religious thought became? The more dunya you have, the more Allah loves you. This dunya is not a sign of how much Allah loves you or hates you. This dunya is a test. It's a test for the wealthy and it's a test for the poor. The, the wealthiest people in history were some of the worst people. Fir'aun was pretty wealthy. Right? And the poorest people, homeless people, Ibrahim alayhi salam was deported. Someone who's been deported, lost his immigration. Right? And he's been made homeless. And he's one of the best human beings that ever lived. Right? And we're not saying that wealth is evil. Wealth is not evil, but it's not good either. It's all a test. And everything that comes to us from Allah is a ni'mah. All of it is a ni'mah. And we will ask, we will be asked about each and every one of it. ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ The other meaning of na'im because of the ya in it is a constant blessing. Blessings that you enjoyed consistently. You turned the tap and water just came out. You opened the eyes and the ability to see was there. You didn't have to file an application every time. They were just made available and accessible to you. So you'll be asked about these, these, these instances of na'im. The, the, the way that Ashokani deals with this uh, subject, he says, and the way he ties it together, subhanAllah. عَنِ النَّعِيمِ الدُّنْيَا الَّذِي أَلْهَاكُمْ عَنِ الْعَمَلِ لِلْآخِرَةِ The surah began, تَكَاثُرْ did what to you? It distracted you. What are the things that distracted us? Na'im. The blessings Allah gave us are the ones that distracted us. If we remember that these blessings will be the things that will be questioned, that instead of these blessings becoming a means by which we get distracted, these blessings will become a means by which we stay on track. The blessings of Allah becomes a means to remember Him. To remember and to be grateful to Him. And to remember that we will be answerable for these amanat that Allah has given us. Because in the end, whatever we've been given is not ours. It's His. فَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَمَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Whatever you've been given is worldly utility. And it was given to you, it's not yours. It was, you know when he says, it was given to you? That means it wasn't yours, it was somebody else's, right? It's Allah's, and it was given to you. And it's given to you, it will be also taken away. SubhanAllah. So, ثُمَّ لَتُسْعَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ In regards to an naim for the believer, uh, another commentary that we find is, it will also be the messenger. It will be the Qur'an. It will be the truth. Isn't that the ultimate blessing in this world? What did you do with that blessing? What did you do with this knowledge? What did you do with the fact that Allah blessed you to say Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That's not a small gift. What is that? You know, 80% of the world's population doesn't enjoy that gift. But we do. You'll be asked about that too. ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ